out of the infinite distances beyond the stratosphere, a strange, weird object is hurtling through interstellar space towards the Earth. Sheila Layton speaking. Sheila, where's Craig? Oh, hello, Uncle Cyrus. Craig hasn't come in yet. I'm waiting to go to dinner with him. You better forget about that dinner, Sheila. There's a strange purple-colored meteor headed toward the Earth. Apparently from the direction of Mars. According to my calculations, it will strike somewhere close to here. Bring Craig over the minute he arrives. mean nothing to you. I've come from the planet which you people on Earth call Mars. From Mars? But you speak English, our language. I speak all languages. Many years ago, my people invented and perfected a remarkable instrument known as the distance eliminator. With the aid of this device, I've been able to see and hear everything that happens on Earth. But this is splendid. Science has been attempting for years to find a method of communicating with Mars. As a matter of fact, I myself have been working on something will eventually enable us to fly to your planet. I know. You are Dr. Cyrus Layton. We've watched the progress of your work, and I've come to you for help. My own projectile, you see, had no provision for a return journey. I'm very anxious to see the plans for your jet plane. Why, I'll show them to you immediately. The observatory is close by, and my car is right here. Thank you. Very ingenious, Doctor. I'm highly flattered, sir. I was afraid that my humble efforts might seem childish to a scientist from Mars. On the contrary, this is just what I need. Your launching rocket is far superior to ours, and your anti-gravity device, which assures a safe landing, is superb. Are there other copies of the plans? No, this is the only copy. My project is backed by the Scientific Research Foundation. We've tried to keep it more or less a secret until we're ready to let the public know. That is a very wise precaution. Do any of the members of the Foundation know the details of the plans? Only one. Our attorney, Craig Foster. He was formerly an officer in the United States Secret Service. I expect him here soon with my niece, Sheila. I'll be proud to introduce them to you. This is really the greatest day of my life. Unfortunately for you, Doctor, it is also the last day of your life. I beg your pardon, I, I'm afraid. 
afraid I don't quite understand. My people have planned for a long time to invade the Earth and enslave its inhabitants, destroying all of those who resist us. I am a forerunner of that invasion, the advance guard. You must be insane. You must have injured your head when you landed. You better let me get you a drink. Stay where you are. I am not mad. The invasion has only been delayed because of our inability to build ships who could land safely and return to Mars. Your plans have supplied that need. Then you landed in the wrong country, my friend. Do you think the American people will sit by and do nothing while you build a jet plane for the purpose of bringing in an army of conquest? Yes, because they won't know I'm building it. I intend to build it in the personality of Dr. Cyrus Layton. You see, I have the ability to kill you, enter your body and use it for my own purposes. Now I know you're insane. This capsule contains a specimen of the atmosphere surrounding Mars. A highly concentrated form of carboxide gas. Harmless for me to breathe, of course, but it will be instantly fatal to you. Open up, Doctor. It's Craig. He probably went to see where the meteor struck. Wait here, I'll see if he's in the study. Who are you? Open this door! There's a man in here, a weird-looking person, dressed in tights and a helmet. He knocked me out, must have escaped to the terrace before you came in. Uncle Cyrus, there's something the matter with him. His pulse is steady. Oh, hello, Craig. I'm all right, Sheila. Some strange creature struck me. What was he after? plans to my jet plane. Did he get them? Well, he must have. They were right on that desk when he knocked me into this chair. It must have been the same man who wrote you that extortion letter a few days ago. I don't know, Craig. The man who was just in here said he was known as the Purple Monster. He didn't mention anything about a letter. What extortion letter, Craig? Your uncle received a threatening letter ordering him to leave $50,000 at the Herndon Crossroads. We set a trap for the man. No one showed up. We didn't mention it because we didn't want to alarm you. That's probably who the man was. But it doesn't help us to recover my plans. We still have no means of tracing the thief. Then we'll find means. It's evident that whoever's behind this theft intends to use your plans to build a jet plane. As soon as he starts to work, he'll have to make some move out into the open. Then we'll catch him. But in the meantime, I must start work on a new set of plans. 
And that's a task involving an endless amount of research. I'm afraid that this loss will delay us for months. Not if Craig can find this purple monster. And just how will he do that? Well, I don't know yet. First thing I'm going to do is have myself deputized as a special officer. All right, Craig. I'll leave the detective business to you. Now, you two run along. Let me get to work on my new set of plans. After the shock you have, you should go to bed. I'm quite all right, Sheila. I wonder if we should notify the police of this attack. I don't think that'd be very wise. Newspapers would get a hold of it, and the whole story of the doctor's invention would be in headlines tomorrow. He's right, Sheila. We must guard our secret carefully. Well, good night, doctor. Good night. Good night, uncle. Dr. Layton. Who are you? I'm the man that sent you that note. You tried to trap me. Nobody plays tricks on hearts, Garrett, and lives. Come across with that 50 grand. What makes you think I've got so much money? Quit, darling. I know the foundation is backing you in some sort of an invention. Now, either you come across with that money, or I'll hold you for ransom and make them pay double. I think I can get it for you. Just give me a minute's time. All right. What's the idea? Make it snappy. My time is valuable. Purple monster, the forerunner of a great army from the planet Mars, which will soon swarm over your world and conquer it. But, Dr. Layton? Dr. Layton is dead, my first victim. Unless you want to be my second, you will listen carefully and obey my orders. Yes, sir. My mission here on Earth is to build an interplanetary jet plane. For this purpose, I have taken Dr. Layton's plans and can assume his body, voice, and personality at will as you have just witnessed. Yes, I certainly did. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to aid me in assembling material for my jet plane and finding dependable men to assist me and carry out my orders. If you are loyal, you'll be compensated with such wealth that the paltry $50,000 you came here for will seem like pin money. Is it agreed? You can depend on me. You have chosen wisely. I assure you that the alternative would have been most unpleasant. I'm afraid it's going to be a long time before I can actually start work on my ship again. All my figures have to be rechecked and verified, new drawings made of all the parts. Now, Doctor, things aren't really as bad as all that. Of course, some of the accessory parts are already built. Or Mitchell just called and said the launching rocket's finished. That is good news. Has he tried it out yet? No, but he has it mounted on temporary runners. He wants us to come out there for a demonstration at 3 o'clock this afternoon. We're going to put it on a truck and haul it out in the hills. 
If I can arrange it, I'll certainly be there. Good. I'll pick up Sheila at the office and we'll meet you there. The shop is at Highway 13 and Kelton Road. Fine. said? Yes, sir. But I'm afraid I didn't understand most of it. What's this launching rocket he mentioned? Well, that's one of the most important units of the jet plane. It gives the projectile the necessary initial push that drives it away from the Earth into the stratosphere. I must get hold of it at once. Well, what's the rush? You're not ready for that sort of gadget yet. No, but once they've made their demonstration, they'll put the rocket in some secure place where we might have trouble getting it. At present, it's in Mitchell's isolated shop and practically unguarded. Oh, I get it. I'll resume my natural form, and we'll be at Mitchell's shop well ahead of Foster. This is your launching rocket. I presume this is the lever that fires the low-caliber rockets? That's right. When the hand on the gauge reaches 100, the main rocket fires and the machine takes off. Is the truck outside fitted with clamps to hold the machine? Yes, but Foster will be here long before you can get it loaded. Hey, maybe he's right. No, he's not. He's going to telephone Foster and cancel his engagement for today. Get over to that phone. Remember, one word to betray us and it will be your last. Now dial it. All set? Yes. Well, let's go. We mustn't keep Mitchell waiting. This is going to be his big day. See you later, Stuart. Hello? Yeah, right here. For you, Craig. Oh, thanks. Hello? Uh, this is Mitchell Craig. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we'll have to postpone the demonstration until tomorrow. Uh, nothing serious. Just a little ignition trouble. Supposing we make it the same time tomorrow. Well, that'll be all right with me. What is it, Craig? Mitchell must be in trouble. He was tapping out an SOS signal while he talked. Come on, Sheila, we've got to get out there. Now that I've done your dirty work, I suppose you're going to kill me anyway. Not as long as you continue to be helpful. I can use your advice when I'm ready to install the rocket in my jet plane. Tie him up and then bring the truck inside. that lever. You'll send this thing out of here in a streak of flame. That's enough work for today. Let that down.
probably Foster. Get into the basement. Are you all right? I'm sorry, Sheila. I'm afraid I dropped off to sleep. Anything wrong? The purple monster attacked Mitchell's workshop. What? That's right. Mitchell escaped, but the launching rocket was destroyed. It's certainly evident now that this purple monster intends to use the plans he stole from you to build a jet plane. The loss of that rocket is very serious. It will require a great deal of money to build a new one. Yes, I know, but we can afford it. The Foundation has ample funds, and Mr. Stewart keeps a reserve of about 100000 in cash in his vault for emergencies. You can draw any reasonable amount from him if I countersign your order. Well, that makes things a bit easier. I'll go down immediately and draw $2,000 as a working advance for Mitchell so that he can get started on another rocket without delay. Good. I can't go there now, but I'll be in before the office closes to countersign your order. That's fine. Foster just told me that Stewart has $100,000 in cash in his vault right now. 100 grand. Who's Stewart? He's president of the foundation. Of course, I can't draw a large amount without arousing suspicion. But you told me that you're an expert in opening safes, didn't you? I can open any of them. That is, they don't have a time lock. Stewart's safe has one. But I have a little device that'll make the time lock ineffective. The foundation office is in the tower building. Go down there, look the place over, and find a way of entry. In the meantime, I'll report our progress to Mars. The Earth expedition calls the Emperor. The Earth is calling the Emperor of Mars. Speak. Your Emperor will hear you. A brief report, Your Highness. As you can see, I'm in possession of the body of Dr. Layton. I have the plans of his jet plane. I will begin construction shortly in a secret hideaway. You have done well. Can you obtain all the materials you need? Yes, Your Highness. I have complete control of the situation. I will soon provide myself with sufficient sums of money so that I can purchase whatever I need. If you need any help, it'll be sent. Mars and your Emperor are proud of you. You lead the first wave of the invasion. I salute Your Highness. I need $2,000 as a working advance for Mitchell so he can start rebuilding again. Very well. Craig will be in later, and I'll have him countersign for the advance then. Your vault looks very strong and businesslike. Yes, since we had the time lock installed, we feel quite secure. Come in and look it over. when you need it. Thanks. We'll probably need it. Any trouble? Not a bit. The device is planted in the vault. You'll be able to open the safe any time after midnight. Hello, Craig. Hello, Stuart. Glad you came in. Here's Dr. Layton's voucher for your signature. Five o'clock. Time to close. Just 
a minute. Look at that time clock. Why, it's 30 minutes fast. You can see the minute hand moving. Strange. Apparently something's wrong with it. Yes, very wrong. I'll bet someone's been tampering with the mechanism. The rate those hands are going, the time lock will be off sometime around midnight instead of 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Who's had access to this vault during the day? Mm, about a half a dozen of our employees. Stands open all day. My people are free to go in and out. But no one except me knows the combination. If I'm right, the man who figured out this device won't have any trouble with the combination. He knows at what time this vault can be opened tonight, and he'll be here to get the money. I'll have my people questioned at once. No. No, you better say nothing about it. That'd warn the thief. I'll come back after dark and stand guard in the corridor. Locks off. Hundred grand in the bag.
course, the Foundation has more funds from which we can draw. The unfortunate part is that with the stolen money and Dr. Layton's plans, the Purple Monster will be able to build a jet plane himself. And he certainly won't have to steal the materials when he can buy them. Yes, but he can't buy the special devices and chemicals which are manufactured exclusively for our jet plane. When he does try to get them, he'll come out into the open. That's how I hope to catch him. Oh, I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Foster. This is Saunders. What about that special fuel I processed for the jet plane? I've got a lot of money tied up in it, and now I understand it may be months before the Foundation will want to use it. Yes, I'm afraid that's true. Well, I called Dr. Layton. He told me to discuss it with you. He feels I should either be reimbursed or permitted to sell the fuel. I doubt very much if you could find a customer. However, I'll take it up with the Foundation members. Goodbye. Saunders thinks he should be paid now for the rocket fuel he made for us, whether we use it or not. I suppose he's right. You'd better get an OK from the other members, and then I'll take care of it. All right. I'll drop in on Dr. Layton at the observatory. Then you tell that absent-minded uncle of mine that I'm coming up and coax him out to lunch. It'll probably be his breakfast or last night's dinner. <laughs> See you later. getting permission to sell his rocket fuel. So we steal it? No, we buy it. Look, according to my code, we don't pay for anything we can lift. Garrett, mm -hmm. among the rewards for your loyalty to me will be a trip to Mars when the jet plane is completed. From my people, you will learn that there's a time to steal and a time to buy. Expediency is our law. That is why when we've completed our fleet of jet planes, we'll conquer the Earth so easily. So we buy the fuel? That's right. Take a truck and one of your men, go to Saunders and tell him you're from the Spartan Motor Company. These plans are better than the first ones, Craig. They're giving me a chance to work out some of the bugs. That's fine, Dr. Layton. Take as much time as you need. Hello? Oh, yes, Stuart. Yes, he's right here. Yes? Saunders just called and said he had a customer for your rocket fuel. Well, thanks, I'll call him. Saunders has a customer for the rocket fuel, and there's only one customer who could use it. That's the Purple Monster. Oh, I'm not so sure, Craig. It's entirely possible that the fuel could be used in other types of motors. Yes, yeah, possible, but not very probable. I'll tell Saunders to stall the deal until I get there. Very well. I'll get back to work. That's right, Saunders. Pretend you're going ahead with the deal. Even load the fuel on the truck if you have to, but stall as long as you can. I'm leaving right away.
What happened? The purple monster, didn't you see him? He must have gone into Uncle's study. Are you all right? Dr. Layton, what happened? Purple monster came in and that's all I remember. He must have gone out that door. I'm positive this attack is part of the Purple Monster's plan to get the rocket fuel. I'm going to Saunders' place at once. You better go with Craig, Sheely. He may need you. Taking long enough to load that truck. I know, but the fuel is very dangerous. It has to be handled carefully. Saunders Refinery. This is the Spartan Motor Company. I'd like to speak to Mr. Benchley if he's still there. Oh, yes, of course. Just a moment. It's for you. Benchley speaking. I tried to stop Foster, but I couldn't. Now he's on his way to Saunders. Grab that fuel and get out of there no matter what you have to do. Right. I'll load that truck myself, but I haven't finished making out the invoice. There's your receipt. that oil. When you get the top, the great stop.
can't outrun him. We're losing that oil. When you get the top, the grade stop. to get away with the fuel is an agent of the same mysterious individual who stole the plans for Dr. Layton's jet plane. The purple monster. That's right. And since he didn't get the fuel, he'll certainly try to steal your secret formula. Well, I'd better assign a guard to watch the safe every night. No, I want that job myself. I have a scheme that'll give you complete protection. Let's hear it. I'd like you to give me your formula. I'll turn it over to the Foundation for safekeeping. Then I want you to write out a false formula naming octoline as a secret chemical ingredient. Why Octoline? Because it's made by only one company, which the Foundation controls. If the Purple Monster does get this false formula, you'll think he has to have Octoline. And his next appearance will be at the Octoline plant. And you'll nab him there. That's an excellent idea, Craig. I'm sorry we had to lose that rocket fuel. It would have been worthwhile if Foster and the girl had been removed. However, I still believe we can get a hold of Saunders' formula. Well, I'd better take several men with me. His Saunders will surely be on his guard now. On guard against a night raid by you and your men, yes. But not against an afternoon call by the respectable Dr. Layton. How do you do, Saunders? I hope I'm not intruding. Not at all, Doctor. Glad to see you. Won't you sit down? It's funny, I was thinking about you. I was wondering if the loss of the rocket fuel would delay your work on the jet plane. Oh, I don't think so. Of course, I've had to start all over again since the original plans were stolen. Perhaps if I had a look at your formula, I could speed things along by basing my calculations on that. No, Doctor. The formula's better off in my safe than in your head. You're carrying enough important secrets around with you. I'm sorry. But would I be out of order if I asked to see the gyro compass you've been working on? No, not at all. The model's out in the shop being demagnetized. If you wait a few minutes, I'll get it for you. Gladly. All right. one door and come in another? Do you always go through people's confidential papers? The draft came through the window and scattered them. I was merely putting them back. No. Not a very likely story, Doctor. I believe you were searching my safe. Probably looking for my rocket fuel formula. That's right. Get it for me. Why, you must be out of your mind, Dr. Layton. Quite the contrary. And I warn you, if you try to summon anyone, I'll fire. Get me the formula. Open it and hand me the contents. Think you've been cooperating with a purple monster all along? I'll tell you something even more fantastic. I'm not Dr. Layton. What? 
I happen to be the purple monster, a visitor from Mars. I'm merely using the late doctor's body. In the near future, my people will invade and conquer the Earth. It's unbelievable, but true. However, I wouldn't care to have you repeat it to anyone. This pellet contains a quantity of Martian gas. Harmless to me, but fatal to you. Craig, I've been trying to reach you by phone for two hours. I was at the courthouse. What's the trouble? Saunders is found dead in his office. So the purple monster has caught us off guard again. Saunders' safe had been rifled. And we found an empty envelope on the floor marked rocket fuel formula. Well, that means the octoline plant will be attacked next. I'll get right out there. You better telephone the news to Dr. Layton. Not here. It's all in the warehouse. But I'm mixing up a new batch now. Where's the warehouse? Well, I, I don't see what business that is of yours. No. Show him, Ed. I know a way to loosen your tongue. Draw some of that acid. warehouse on River Street. It's all we want to know. Drop those guns.
should run into the vent. I'll keep him pinned down. run into the vent. I'll keep him pinned down. We got the best of us again. He has all the luck. It isn't luck. The man has a keen mind. He acts quickly. He knows we're building a jet plane, and he's able to anticipate almost every move we make. However, I'm going to be just one jump ahead of him in my next move. Your next move? Yes. I'm expecting a call from Professor Crandall any moment. He's going to stage a demonstration for Foster and me.
Dr. Layton speaking. Oh, Professor Crandall. Yes? You're ready to demonstrate the electro-annihilator. Excellent. In about half an hour? Thanks, I'll be there. An electro-annihilator? What's that? It's a device to protect the jet plane while in flight. I must get hold of it at once. That's where I can use you. I see. So I make a surprise appearance with a truck. No, the machine is already mounted on a truck. But take one of your men, because Foster will be there. As you know, falling meteors are the greatest hazard to space travel. But as I propose to demonstrate, these flying bodies can be located and destroyed by the electro-annihilator before they collide with a jet plane. Oh, I see. When the locator map warns of any approaching object, I focus the annihilator beam in the direction indicated. When the object moves into the beam, it is completely destroyed. In this demonstration, of course, I am using only a fraction of the annihilator's power. How about more distant objects? His range is almost unlimited. All you do is set the range finder to the approximate distance until the object becomes visible on the locator map. Don't move, any of you. Get your hands up. Tie them up. Another car has been mysteriously shattered on the Flint Canyon Highway, the 12th in three days. In each case, the destruction was so complete, the police have been unable to discover the method by which these crimes were committed. It's horrible. Who could be doing this? There's no question about that. The purple monster and his men are testing the annihilator and ruthlessly killing people in the process. Can't we do anything to stop them? I think we can, if my theory is correct. These are the four highways in the region of Flint Canyon where the cars have been destroyed. As you see, they form a rectangle. Whoever's responsible for these crimes must be operating within this area. Well, that's an interesting theory, but how can you prove it? The area you indicate covers about 100 square miles. Now, Professor Crandall gave me a beam finder, which will help locate the annihilator. I'm going to drive through that section and see what happens. After what's happened to all those other cars? Well, the beam finder not only establishes the locality of the annihilator, it gives plenty of warning before it strikes. Let me go with you. No, I think you'd better stay here. I might be able to help. I can follow in my own car at a safe distance. Well, all right, but make sure you keep that safe distance. We'll contact you later, Doctor. All right, Craig. Calling HG, calling HG. HG answering. Come in. Foster's on his way to the canyon with a beam finder. Sheila's following in her own car. 
They have communicate with each other by radio. That should help you pick up their route. Let me know as soon as you dispose of them. It'll be a pleasure. Start the locator beam. I'll try and tune in faster. Come in, Sheila. Hello, Craig. Everything okay? I'm all right so far. I'm just entering the pass. Where are you? About two miles past Riverhead. Good. Don't follow me too closely. Mac, I'll handle this job personally. I'll take over and you stick by the radio, huh? Sheila. The finder just started to move. The annihilator is north, northeast, somewhere to my right. I'll call you back in a few minutes. Won't be long now. The lights almost reached the mark. Sheila, I'm coming into range of the annihilator beam. Don't try to... That was simple. Now for the girlfriend. Are you all right? That machine. Craig, can you hear me? Where are you? Come in, Craig. Are you all right? Please come in.
moving right along. It set the blaster right where it hit Foster. She'll never know what hit her. Turn off that machine. Craig, can you hear me? Where are you? Come in, Craig. Craig, are you all right? Please come in. Jump, the annihilator beam is focused on you. get away in a hurry, but I did save the Annihilator. Well, I'm afraid we'll never be able to use it while Foster has the beam finder. Once he has it repaired, it'll lead him directly to the Annihilator. Repaired? You mean the beam finder's broken? Yes. Foster telephoned me and said it was slightly damaged at Flint Canyon. He and the Leighton girl are taking the finder to Crandall to have it fixed. Then I'd better get right over to Crandall's. No, that won't be necessary. I asked Foster to bring the machine to me first so I could examine it. My plan is very simple. Crandall isn't going to live long enough to repair that finder. Wait here, Sheila. Crandall tries to remove this coil, a spring will drive a tiny poison dart into his hand. Will it kill him instantly? Not instantly. At first, the poison will affect only his mind. He'll have but one desire, the lust to kill and destroy. I shall arrange for Foster himself to deliver the machine to Crandall.
Sheila, what happened? Somebody sneaked up behind me, took the finder, and locked me in the closet. Craig, here it is. I saw Garrett trying to escape. I started after him. He dropped this. Oh, and... that's it. The purple monster lured me away so that Garrett could steal the finder. Yes, but before he strikes again, you and Sheila better take this to Crandall and have him repair it. You're right. The purple monster has an uncanny way of finding out our plans. We know that he'll stop at nothing to get what he wants. I'm sure the damage isn't very serious. Why don't you drop back in a couple of hours? Well, don't you want me to stick around just in case of trouble? Thanks, but that won't be necessary. All right, then. We'll be back soon. Come on, Sheila. should have had its effect by now. You better go down to Crandall's because I'm not just sure how he'll react or what'll happen. But remember, whatever you do, get that beam finder. Ah. Ruined. Utterly ruined. A creation of genius destroyed by incompetent ignorance. It's Foster's fault. But I'll get even with him. I'll make him pay. I can destroy, too. I'll kill Foster. No one would blame me. It's retribution. how easy it would be to use part of my laboratory equipment as a weapon of destruction. That will do very nicely. It looks so innocent. What are you doing here? Why, I, I thought you said that... I said I'd call you when I was ready. Sorry, I guess I misunderstood you. That's just the trouble. I spend my life studying and experimenting, and then some young upstart like you comes along and tries to tell me what to do. Really, Mr. Crandall, I'm sure Craig didn't intend to... You keep your nose out of this. Even if your uncle is the head of the observatory, I've forgotten more about science than he ever will learn. If that's the way you feel about it, suppose we just forget the whole thing and let me take the beam finder. Maybe you think you can repair it yourself. Oh, we're wasting time. If you don't mind, I'll just take it and forget we ever bothered you.
took Professor Crandall to the hospital, but he died without regaining consciousness. Too bad. Now, we never will learn the reason for his strange behavior. An autopsy showed that he died of an overdose of a chemical known as curava. Curava? Never heard of it. It's a rare chemical that affects the brain tissues, causing madness and then death. If we could find the source of this curava, it might lead us directly to the purple monster. Yes, Craig is checking on that now. What did you find out, Craig? Well, Curava is handled locally by the pharmacy supply company. They've had only one customer. A certain blind man uses it occasionally diluted as an eye wash. I've already tried to contact the doctor who wrote the prescription, but I haven't been able to locate him. Why don't we check on the blind man, Craig? Well, that's a good idea, Sheila. Would you mind taking care of it? He's uh, an organ grinder named Tony. He usually hangs out around 5th and Elm Streets. While I'm at Crandall's inquest, suppose you go down and see what he can tell you. All right. Is your name Tony? Yes, it is. I understand you've been using a chemical solution for your eyes. Uh, something known as Curava? What about it? I'm merely interested in locating the doctor who prescribed that treatment. Oh, his name is Morley. He lives at 859 Pine Street. Thank you. Thank you, miss. Go ahead. Some girl was just here, and she was trying to pump me about the Curava. So I sent her to Logan's place on Pine Street. Good. We'll be there before she is. Get in touch with me if anything else happens. Right. Must be that Leighton girl snooping around. Very likely. If it is, when she comes to Logan's place, she'll walk right into our hands. Come along, Garrett. is ready for a test. Good. Let's see how it works. That pan contains a small charge of explosive wired to the electric eye mechanism. The powder will be set off by an electrical impulse transmitted to the relay box. Proceed with the demonstration. Watch the door. The girl may be along any moment. The power beam is on now. That establishes a contact between the electric eye lenses mounted in this door frame. Watch what happens when I walk through the door and break the contact between the lenses.
Come in, Miss Layton. Straight ahead. The purple monster. I should have suspected this was a trap. Well, you can't know everything, lady. But she knows some things we'd like to know. Sit down. I understand you've shown an unusual interest in Curaba. Just how much do you and Foster know about it? I'm not talking. I believe you'll change your mind. Tie her up, Garrett, while she thinks it over. I'd advise you to let me go. Craig Foster will never stop searching until he finds me. <laughs> but he may not find you alive. You're sure that a young lady hasn't questioned you about it? Nobody has spoken to me all day. Well, thanks anyway. Thank you, sir. Seven. T calling out seven. I just had another visitor, a young fellow. He was asking about that girl. Foster. What'd you tell him? Well, I told him that. Officer, I, I ain't done nothing wrong. Yeah, a blind man recognizing a policeman just comes natural to you. Grab that hand organ, officer. They got him. What about this Tony? How much does he know? The wavelength and the radio call number of our hideout, but not the location. We can change the wavelength. Anything else? The address of this place. Will he talk? Under enough pressure, he might talk. Come on, out with it. Who were you talking with on that radio? I tell you, I don't know. I've never seen him. Look, mister, the men you're involved with have several murders to answer for. You better remember that. You might be seriously implicated. All right. His name is Garrett. Where can I find him? He's at a small house at the edge of town. 859 Pine Street. Take this man in for further questioning. I'm going to that house. Foster's probably on his way here right now. So you'd better connect the electric eye mechanism to those cases of explosives. So when Foster steps into the room, he and the girl both will be blown to bits. But I've spent months building this machine, and now you want me to blow it up. It's better than leaving it here for Foster to find. We certainly don't have time to move it, so get busy. Get out. Hold it. Where's Sheila Layton? How do we know? Let's take a look in that other room.
the doorway. It was a trap. If you'd walked through that beam, both of us would have been blown to pieces. fell through the doorway and then the place blew up. That was a dreadful experience, my dear. This purple monster is utterly inhuman. And you say it was this supposedly blind man, Tony, who gave you the address of the Pine Street house? Yes. And right now he's locked up in the city jail. Good. What do you intend to do with him? Well, if we can make him talk, we might get a clue that'll lead us directly to the purple monster. Uh, Dr. Layton, you've seen several of the Purple Monster's men, so the district attorney would like you to come to his office at 2 o'clock this afternoon to see if you can identify Tony as one of them. Well, I'm very busy, but I suppose I should go. That would be the wise thing to do, Uncle Cyrus. I'll call for you here at 1.30. All right, I'll be ready. Now, you two run along. Let me get some work done. Something will have to be done about Tony immediately. The district attorney will try to make him talk. So what? Tony doesn't know where this place is, and the only time he ever laid eyes on you is when we bought the cure offer from him. That's the point. The district attorney wants me as Dr. Layton to try to identify Tony as one of the Purple Monster's men. That's bad, because Tony will squeal on you to save himself. I am due at the district attorney's office at 2 o'clock. Tony must be silenced. That's easy to do, but not before 2 o'clock. Can't you delay going down there? Not without arousing suspicion. Unless, of course, I am forcibly prevented from being there. I have it. Shortly before two o'clock, Sheila will be driving me into town along the Crest Highway. <laughs> I have a feeling that car is following us. You're just nervous, Sheila. The man probably wants to pass us. Perhaps. But after what's happened, I'm not taking any chances.
Layton. You're coming with me. You stay right where you are. I'll have you jailed for this. Shut up and get in my car. the girl wasn't hurt. She'll be an eyewitness to the fact that I was carried off. You did a very convincing job. I should. I've had plenty of practice. What about Tony? We'll take care of him in jail this afternoon. Fritz Benham. One of the kitchen helpers. He'll attend to Tony. And where are you taking me? Andy Martin's repair shop. He handles stolen cars. Fritz will report there as soon as he's finished his little job at the jail. No, that won't do. I don't want all those thugs to see me there with you. You'll have to tie me up and bring me in as a prisoner. That'll protect me in case Foster catches up with any of them. OK. I'll make it look all right. Hold it. Yeah, that's high enough. What's this all about, Garrett? I want to hold this man here for a while. You can cut yourself in on the take. Yeah. You mean I'll cut myself in on a stretch in the big house? You're hotter than the chili pepper. I don't want any part of your business. Oh, calm down, Andy. Fritz Benham will be here with a message in a little while. And we can take this guy to a new hideout. Go over there and sit down and keep your trap shut. Well, thanks, Inspector. Keep me posted. Craig. Garrett's got Uncle Cyrus. He forced us off the road and took Uncle away in another car. Well, take it easy, Sheila. I think I know how to find your uncle. Inspector Evans just phoned me that our prisoner, Tony, died suddenly after eating his lunch. Poisoned? Probably, but there's no definite proof yet. Dr. Layton was undoubtedly carried off to prevent him from reaching the district attorney's office before Tony could be put out of the way. But how will this help to find Uncle Cyrus? The police suspect Fritz Benham, a kitchen helper, of tampering with Tony's food. But he doesn't know he's suspected, and I'm going to follow him when he leaves the jail. He may lead me straight to the man who took your uncle. That's your man, Foster. Thanks, I'll take over from here. Don't pull that fainting stuff on me. Hey, you better keep that window closed. Somebody might see us in here. Drop that gun. I got you covered.
Dr. Layton rescued. Mysterious kidnapper still at large. There isn't a word about you saving the doctor, Craig. You're being too modest. Oh, it isn't modesty. It's just that I want to keep this as quiet as possible. So far, we've been able to keep all details of the jet plane out of the papers. I wonder if more publicity wouldn't help us catch the purple monster. No, I don't think so. He undoubtedly reads the papers, and the less information he gets, the better for us. Hmm. If you're right, this story will interest him. Dr. Paul Meredith, noted physician, has perfected an oxygen device that will revolutionize the treatment of respiratory diseases. He has refused offers from the Scientific Research Foundation and other sources. Great Scott. Why does our foundation want that machine? Now, I've seen Meredith's working model. On a larger scale, it's just what the jet plane needs to create oxygen to use beyond the stratosphere. If the Purple Monster is building a ship from Dr. Layton's plans, he will certainly need a device like that. And he'll go after it. I'd better warn Meredith. Hello, Meredith. This is Craig Foster. I'd like to see you. It's very important. What lunch date? I didn't make a date with you. Well, there's something very funny about this. Would you mind remaining in your laboratory? I'll be right over. Someone called Meredith this morning and said I wanted to meet him downtown for lunch. The purple monster must be planning to get him away from the laboratory long enough to steal his machine. What are you going to do? We'll have to get Meredith to a safe place. I think perhaps you'd better take him to the observatory and wait there until you hear from me. I'm going to be in Meredith's laboratory when the purple monster arrives. What have you learned about the setup of Meredith's laboratory? Only that he keeps the model of the oxygen device in the safe. Here. This electronic torch will cut through that safe like it was made of paper. Want me to go along? No, oh, I'll handle it myself. Meredith isn't going to be there. You stay here and keep the men busy on the jet plane. We caught the great scientist Nappy. Yes, poor uncle. He's just worn out from his work. Anything wrong, Dr. Meredith? I don't want to alarm you, Miss Layton, but your uncle is not sleeping normally. I don't understand. It's very strange. Pulse, respiration. It's almost like a coma, as though he were drugged. It must be the work of the purple monster.
expecting you this time. Put that thing down. So the purple monsters finally made a mistake. Hello? Oh, hello, Sheila. Your uncle. Something strange has happened to him. He doesn't seem to be breathing. Dr. Meredith believes it's some sort of a coma. He says we should get him to a hospital immediately. Oh, yes, by all means. Phone St. John's Hospital and have them send an ambulance. Ask Meredith to go there right away and prepare for Dr. Layton's arrival. I'll be with you just as soon as I can take care of the situation here. Our plan is in danger. The girl is taking Dr. Layton's body to St. John's Hospital in an ambulance. Is it too late to stop her? It's not too late. I'm driving back to the observatory. I'll meet the ambulance and stop it, but I'll need your help. All right, I'll get there as soon as I can. Good. Start at once. that wheel. Open the doors, Garrett. Step on, Miss Layton. Put Dr. Layton in my car. Go on! 
go on. The girl may be here any moment. Get down to the cabin at once. Yes, sir. I was just trying to phone you. How on earth did you get here? The strangest thing happened. I fell asleep in my study, and next thing I knew, I was in the back of a moving car. And Garrett and the purple monster were in the front seat. Yes. And then what happened? When the car slowed down the curve. I opened the door jumped out and fell in some bushes. I made my way back here in sort of a daze. That's all I remember. Well, don't try to talk now. We'll discuss the whole thing after you've had a good rest. Get him a glass of water, Sheila. Foster and Sheila swallowed my story hook, line, and sinker. And you have nothing to worry about? No, not as far as they're concerned. But I'm behind schedule with the jet plane. I'll have to explain my reasons to the Emperor. The Earth Expedition calls the Emperor. The Emperor of Mars bids you speak. Is the jet plane almost finished? We're making good progress, Your Highness but I have encountered many serious obstacles. Obstacles? What obstacles could possibly stop you? Second highest on Mars. Allow me to give your majesty a complete report. After landing on Earth, I contrived to be alone with Dr. Layton in his observatory, where he showed me the plans of his jet plane. Very ingenious, doctor. I'm highly flattered, sir. This is really the greatest day of my life. Unfortunately for you, Doctor, it is also the last day of your life. I beg your pardon. I, I'm afraid I don't quite understand. My people have planned for a long time to invade the Earth and enslave its inhabitants, destroying all those who resist us. 
I am a forerunner of that invasion, the advance guard. You must be insane. You must have injured your head when you landed. You better let me get you a drink. Stay where you are. I'm not mad. The invasion has only been delayed because of our inability to build ships that could land safely and return to Mars. Your plans have supplied that need. You see, I have the ability to kill you, enter your body and use it for my own purposes. Now I know you're insane. This capsule contains a specimen of the atmosphere surrounding Mars. Harmless for me to breathe, of course, but it will be instantly fatal to you. Having assumed his body, I was accepted by everybody as Dr. Layton. Then I learned of the newly perfected launching rocket. I was about to secure this for our jet plane when I was interrupted by Craig Foster and forced to fight for my life. opponent. On another occasion, he prevented Garrett from getting away with a valuable load of rocket fuel. We can't outrun him. We're losing that oil. When you get the top, the grade, stop. plainly see that even I have been seriously hindered by such difficulties. I can also see that this Foster person is endangering our plans. You must take steps to remove him at once. Your command is my law. Eliminating Foster won't be an easy matter. It'll have to be done quietly and away from the observatory so that I'll never be suspected. I know how that can be done. I have a secret apartment in town, and I find it very handy to get rid of people who don't play ball with me. It's very easy. I simply take care of them by telephone. By telephone? Yeah. And if you can find a way to get Foster that apartment, after he answers that phone there, he'll never be heard from again. Well, hello, Doctor. I had to see you, Craig. You promised us that you'd go to bed and rest. Have a seat. Now, oh, what's on your mind that's so important? I just remembered something I heard the Purple Monster tell Garrett when I was a prisoner in their car. Yes? They were planning to separate. And Garrett was to go to 362 Bond Street and wait in the first floor apartment for further orders. Then that may be their headquarters. Now, don't do anything rash, Craig. I'll be careful, but I am going to pay a visit to that Bond Street address.
we can be very grateful that you weren't killed, Craig. Did these murderers leave any evidence that might lead you to the purple monster? Well, I did find this in the room. Well, that's just a blank piece of paper. No, not entirely blank. There's a faint imprint of some words that were written on the sheet above it. Let's see if we can bring them out. Benjamin. Well, that must be Professor Benjamin, the inventor of the atmospheric stabilizer. Why should these men be interested in Benjamin or his device? Well, if the purple monster is building a jet plane, he'll obviously need some sort of a stabilizer to regulate the atmosphere and air pressure in the control chamber. Possibly you're right, Craig. There's no doubt about it. I'm going to see Benjamin and warn him at once. telephone trap not only failed to dispose of Foster, but you left evidence that is leading him straight to Benjamin. That's going to make it tougher to get that stabilizer. It would be difficult in any event, since he's never drawn plans of his stabilizer. He carries the details in his mind. Oh, I've made men talk before. I'm afraid you might find Benjamin a rather difficult subject. As a matter of fact, this job is going to require more tact and discretion than I can hope to find in any of my associates here. Purple monster calls the Emperor of Mars. The Emperor listens. Speak. I have encountered a problem, Your Highness, that is beyond the powers of my Earth-born henchmen. I need my assistant, Marsha. Whatever you need, you shall have. Marsha will be dispatched immediately by X-7. Are you making any progress on the jet plane? Excellent, Your Highness. The hour of Earth's conquest is near. You begin to understand my plan? I think I do. I'll calculate the exact time of Marsh's arrival, and we'll meet her at the same place I landed. Here she comes. Why, that's only a falling star. That is Projectile X-7. Inferior to the jet plane we're building now, but adequate for a one-way passage. Master, I've come to assist you. This is Garrett, my earthly assistant. I'm eager to hear my assignment. Very well, Marsha. A certain Professor Benjamin has invented an atmospheric stabilizer, which we need for the jet plane. He has a trusted woman assistant. Whose body and identity I shall assume. That is correct. As his secretary, you'll be able to secure the necessary information from the professor regarding the principles of his invention. One important part, the dimensional magnet, has already been completed. That you must find and seize. I understand. I'll take you to his workshop in the morning. I appreciate your concern, Craig, but I think it's a waste of time for you to stay here and guard me. The purple monster will stop at nothing, Professor Benjamin, or your life may be in danger. I'm used to working with death at my elbow. Uh, step into the alcove. If anyone were to walk through here, it would be the end of it. What do you mean, Professor? Let me show you. Let's stand over there.
that's amazing. The same thing would happen to a man. To me, if I weren't careful. Well, nevertheless, don't underestimate the purple monster. I won't. Well, I'll leave you now, Professor. Well, why don't you have lunch with me before you go? My house is just across the yard. Well, thanks, I will. I'll be back in an hour, Helen. Uh, you'd better lock the doors. Very well, Professor. You, you won't need to know. What do you want? Your identity and your job. <laughs> Helen! Helen! What happened? Helen, open the door! Break it down! She's fainted, or got a shock. I must have touched a galvanizer coil by mistake. Stupid of me. Do you feel all right now? Of course. A little shock like that is all in a day's work. Well, if you're sure everything's all right, I'd better be going. But I'd advise you both to be very careful. We will. Goodbye. I'm alone. You can talk. I have all the data on the stabilizer. And I found the dimensional magnet. You can send Garrett to pick them up. No. The professor's at a conference. He won't be back for some time. Good. I'll send Garrett right away. Do you want me to remain here with the professor? It would look better if you did. Are you sure that no one suspects Helen is Marcia? No more than anyone suspects that Dr. Layton is the purple monster. Goodbye, doctor. Hello, Professor. You're back early. They called the conference off, Helen. Uh, would you mind going over to the house to see if a letter came from the patent office? I'd be glad to. Hello, Craig? Yes, Professor Benjamin? I found out something extraordinary about the purple monster. Yes, it's incredible. But the purple monster is... <laughs> Professor, Professor Benjamin. What happened? There was a shot just as he was going to tell me something about the purple monster. You'd better get over there. to kill him. There isn't time to explain now. Here's the dimensional magnet and the data on the stabilizer. Good. Are you staying? I'll have to. They'd suspect me if I left. I'll tell them the purple monster killed him. Get those hands up. I'm so glad you're here, Mr. Foster. Who killed him? The purple monster. I... He moved. He's still alive. <laughs>
Dr. Layton and tell him what happened while I tie up Garrett. Hello, Dr. Layton? This is Helen. A terrible thing has happened. Two men broke in and tried to steal the dimensional magnet and kill Professor Benjamin. I presume someone else is there. Yes. Mr. Foster came in just as the men were about to leave. There was a fight. One of the men was killed. Mr. Foster captured the other one. A man by the name of Garrett. Continue talking and listen carefully to what I have to say. Yes, Doctor. I presume they'll call the police. Foster will probably question you about Benjamin's murder. When you answer, use the words Plan 7 in such a way that Garrett is sure to hear them, then they know what to do. If you have a chance, try to loosen or cut Garrett's bonds. Yes, we'll let you know what we learn. Burn for this job, Garrett. Helen here was an eyewitness. Yes, I saw it all. He and the professor were having an argument about uh, some Plan 7. Plan 7? Sure. I killed him. It was orders from the Purple Monster. Who is this Purple Monster? If he had any other name, I've never heard it. But if I'm going to the chair, I'm going to take him with me. Look, if I turn him in, will he give me a break? Do you know where to find him? Sure. I can take you to his hideout. And walk me right into a trap. Oh, no. Now, how can I do that? My hands are tied and you got a gun on my back. I may be a crook, Foster, but I'm no fool. All right, Garrett, I'll take a chance. I'll call Sheila and have her come over and stay with you until the coroner comes. Hello, Sheila. Professor Benjamin's been murdered. Murdered? Who did it? I can't tell you now, but why don't you come over to Benjamin's place and help Helen? She can explain what happened. Right. Now, oh, where is this place? On Dunham Road. When Sheila gets here, you better look this room over for clues. I'll come back as soon as I check on Garrett's story. All right, Mr. Foster. I hope you find the purple monster. Let's get started. Car coming up the road. Get under cover. Don't shoot until I give you the signal. Remember, if there's any treachery, you won't live to go on trial. a visitor, I see. Garrett said I'd find you here. And you were stupid enough to believe that you would take me by surprise? You're here because I want you here. If you fire that gun, it means your own death. If I didn't want to put you before a judge and jury, I'd call your bluff. Then I'll call yours. With a mere gesture of my hand, send you into eternity. This time, put both your hands up.
Hello? Oh, yes, Craig, it's Sheila. The coroner was here. Helen went over to Benjamin's house, but she'll be back soon. Listen carefully. Garrett escaped. The rope I tied him with had been cut, and I believe Helen did it. She's the only one that had the opportunity. Watch her very carefully. I'll get there as quickly as I can. All right. dimensional magnet to Dr. Layton. I'll be right back. I'm sorry. You'll have to wait here until Mr. Foster returns. What do you mean? Someone cut the rope on Garrett's hands with those shears. Why, who could have done that? You should be able to answer that question yourself. You were the only one here. Are you accusing me of doing it? We'll find out who did it when Craig returns and checks the fingerprints on those shears. I have no intention of waiting for Craig.
I managed to save myself, but that strange girl was killed. You poor child. You survived another terrible experience. Are you sure that she left no clue behind? Anything that might tell us who she was or where she came from? There was only one thing that might help us, Uncle Cyrus. I noticed that the girl was wearing a very unusual medallion on her belt. It came off during the struggle, and I think it fell over the cliff. Does Craig know about this? Yes. I'm picking him up at Stuart's office, and we're driving out to the cliff to look for him. That's an excellent idea. The medallion might prove to be important evidence. We'll do our best to find it. told me she saw Marcia's transformation from Helen's body. Well, Marcia's dead, so how can that hurt us? Marcia was wearing a jeweled medallion on her belt, made of metallarium, a mineral element found only on Mars, and Sheila Layton saw it. She's meeting Foster, and they're both going out to the cliff to hunt for it. But what can happen if they do find it? If they find it and have it analyzed, they'll learn that it came from Mars. That'll put them much too close to my secret. You've got to find that medallion first. Okay, I'll pick up a man and go right out there. Get back to the car. Try and get away, Mears. I'll hold Foster here. Where's the key? It was there a minute ago. Well, it's not here now. Hand it over. I tell you, I haven't got it. I want that key, and I want it quick. I tried to take our car, but I hid the key. Good work, Sheila. But unfortunately, Garrett got away, and he probably has the medallion. Either Garrett or this fellow here. We'll find out. That 
it. Do you think it will give us a clue? Strange looking metal. I'm going to take it to Riverdale and have Harvey, the mineralogist, analyze it. Foster and the Leighton girl up the cliff. Mears was killed and I barely get away. What about the medallion? Foster has it. But I overheard him say he was taking it to some mineralogist by the name of Harvey to have it analyzed. Go to Harvey's laboratory and get that medallion. In case you need help, I'll be there as soon as I can. What do you make of it, Mr. Harvey? It's an unusual metal. Very unusual. Do you have any idea what it is? That's hard to say until I analyze it. How long will that take? Not long. If you want to, you can wait in the office. Thanks. Yes. Somebody bring you a medallion to have analyzed a while ago. That's right. He uh... skipped the details. Let me have that medallion. Come on, be quick about it. Do you have any authority for such a request? Yeah, this. Now hand it over. Don't bother, Garrett. I'll take that medallion. I'll take this, too. Quite an improvement over my own. You see, during our little shooting match we had at the cliff, I ran out of shells. I'll be back later, Harvey. All right. You and I are going to headquarters. Well, Foster. How did you get in here? You overlooked a side door to the cooling room. I merely disposed of Harvey's assistant, and here I am. Now, if you'll be so kind as to drop that gun.
Harvey find out what the metal was in that medallion? Yes, a spectrum analysis showed that it was composed of a mineral element which has never been found on Earth, but is known to exist on Mars. Exactly where does that get us? To something very important. Harvey also found traces of carboxide gas in the cavities of the medallion. Now that gas can be made synthetically on Earth, but science knows that it exists in its natural form on Mars. Well, that may be true, but after all, it's only a theory. Nobody from the Earth has ever been to Mars. But if someone from Mars had been on the Earth, this carboxide gas might be necessary for their existence. You realize how fantastic all this sounds? Yes, but fantastic is just the word to describe the purple monster and the girl who was associated with him. Sheila saw her emerge from the body of Helen. So it's entirely conceivable that the purple monster could merge into the body of a man. Craig, you don't believe that. I'll believe anything that explains this mystery. And I'm convinced that we've succeeded in linking the purple monster with Mars. He's building a jet plane, obviously to return to Mars, and he'll need carboxide gas to breathe on the way. I'm going to find out if anybody's ordered that stuff from a chemist. Craig, if I had your imagination, I could fly to Mars without a jet plane. Let me know how you come out. All right, I will. Come on, Sheila. How are you getting along with the loading? Fine. We're almost ready for your final inspection. And I'm picking up the last truckload of carboxide this afternoon. That's good, because we may have to take off a little sooner than I had planned. Foster had Marsh's medallion analyzed, and now he knows about the gas. He also made some rather shrewd guesses about my origin. Fortunately, we're making the carboxide in our own plant, so his investigations won't lead him very far. I see. You don't know of any other firm that might make carboxide? All right, thank you. Well, that's the last of them. Nobody makes this stuff. Most of them never even heard of it. No luck? Luck? As soon as I mentioned carboxide, they looked at me as though they thought I intended to kill somebody. Well, you could kill somebody with that stuff. It's highly explosive and deadly poisonous. Well, I'm afraid we're through. World Chemical was our last chance. Incidentally, they did mention that the only unusual customer they had was some outfit that bought empty gas containers. Empty gas containers? Who was it? I didn't ask. But whoever they are, they're picking up a load this afternoon. Well, it's a long shot, but I'm going out there and look them over. If I learn anything, I'll call you at the observatory. Your motor started. I'll be ready in a minute.
those containers are coming loose. Keep going. I'll go back and fix it. Knocked him into the trailer. He's not gonna bother us anymore. Craig thought he'd better find out who was buying those empty gas containers. And you haven't heard from him since? No, he was to call here if he learned anything. Well, make yourself at home, my dear, and if you'll excuse me, I'll go on with my work. Go right ahead, Uncle Cyrus. I'll stay here and wait for his call. trailer. The boss wants you to phone him as soon as you get in. What's that gate? <sighs> Thanks, Garrett. Don't thank me. Keep your eyes open. There's enough gas in this plant to blow us a bitch. Clayton speaking. This is Garrett. Do you want me? Oh, yes. So glad you called. Before you go any further with your experiment, I want to warn you again to be careful. We can't afford to have strangers learn anything of our process. I get it. You can't say anything right now. What are you worrying about Foster? Well, you can forget about Foster. He climbed aboard the truck and I took care of him. See you later.
clicks of the dial and figured out the number he called. Here it is. Why, it's the observatory. Exactly. I remember now. Someone called while I was there, but Uncle answered it. Craig, surely you don't think he has any connection with the purple monster? I don't know what to think, Sheila. But suppose the purple monster had killed your uncle and was using his body just as the Martian girl did with Helen. Oh, it's too horrible. I, I can't believe it. I know how you feel, Sheila, but we've got to face the truth. I suppose you're right. I have a plan that might give us the answer. Do you think you could get your uncle to leave the observatory long enough for me to hide a noiseless motion picture camera in his study? Yes, but what would that accomplish? I'll rig it up to the telephone so that when he picks up the receiver, the camera will start. Then I'll call him and give him a message that will force him into action if he is the purple monster. All right, I'll call him. Yes? Oh, hello, Sheila. Uncle Cyrus, can you come over immediately? Mr. Stewart has some papers that need your signature. Well, can't they wait? I'm terribly busy. Oh, very well. I'll be there shortly. He'll be right over. Good. I'll get the camera and hook it up. Keep him here as long as possible. Sheila, I don't know what's come over you. These could have waited till later. As you know, Uncle Cyrus, the Foundation is preparing its annual report, and this data must be checked as soon as possible. Well, I can't give you any more time just now, Sheila. I'm sorry. Perhaps tomorrow. I kept him here as long as I could. Everything's all set. I got out just one jump ahead of him. Well, a great deal is going to depend on this phone call. Dr. Layton speaking. Are you sure of what you're saying? I just discovered the purple monster is using the observatory for a hideout. Positive. I'm coming over with a squad of men from headquarters and make a thorough search of the place. This is all very upsetting, Craig. Hadn't you better come down here alone and talk things over with me? Oh, there's nothing to worry about. The sooner the police take over, the safer we'll all be. Check the camera. It worked. I've got to get this film developed immediately. Uncle has a developing outfit in the document basement. Fine. Suppose you go down and get the equipment ready while I unload the film.
Everything seems to be in order, but I can't find the gyro compass. It's over there. I'm just going to... Someone's using the secret entrance. most unfortunate that you had to interfere with my business at the last moment, otherwise you might have lived until I returned from Mars with an invading armada of jet planes. It's too late to load the annihilator on the plane, but you may use it to destroy the observatory and anyone who happens to be in it. So get it warmed up. Garrett, get away from there. Where's the purple monster? I don't know. All right, untie her.
Well, Inspector, what do you think about it? Well, I'd rather not think about it. It's like a bad dream. It would have been a nightmare if that creature had escaped and brought back an army of purple monsters. That's right. We can be very grateful that the secrets of the jet plane remain on the Earth. 